Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. Hi, my name is Melissa Cullen and I'm from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Um, one day we were looking for a dog. We had our heart set on the Rhodesian Ridgebacks and we searched for a breeder, but we couldn't find one local. And if we did, they were overbooked and never could answer our phone calls. So one day we were at PetSmart and we were going through a book, a dog breed, and we came across the Thai Ridgeback. And that's how we discovered the breed. We started doing our research and it took us a good eight to nine months before we found our first Thai. They're a very primitive breed from Thailand. They were discovered in the early 90s, um, like a man brought them into the States and started breeding them in the States in the early 90s. They're very um, ancient breed. They're not crossed with anything. Um, they were bred to hunt cobras and keeps the snakes at bay from the house. They're also guard dogs for some people in Thailand. So they're very protective of their property and very uh, aware of their surroundings. Living with the Thai Ridgeback dog is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, one dog was very easy. Two dogs, you have to teach them to get along and not fight. Three dogs, uh, it gets harder and harder. Um, but if, as long as they get their daily exercise in, their walks, and we do everything on a routine. So everything is eat at this time, walk at this time. I mean, of course, life comes up and you have to make changes, but we still manage to make sure they get that daily exercise because a, a tired dog is a happy dog for sure. This is Kiva. She'll be three in September. She was uh, imported from Thailand, a breeder in Thailand. We also have two more dogs, one from their states and one from their litter. We got Keats in February of 2014 um, from a breeder in Boston and uh, my husband drove all the way there to pick him up, drove all the way back and he, he was about eight months old when we got her and we got her in November of 2014. When he was alone I think he had a little bit of uh, separation anxiety because we did so much with him all the time and he was a very uh, hard dog to almost like break but uh, with all the exercise we did and all the socializing and we just bring cookies everywhere we go, give strangers cookies, 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 then they associate people are not scary and, you know, they are, they're okay. When they first met each other, it was hard because Keats was so used to being alone for eight months and now we brought in this tiny little eight-week-old puppy and he has to share. So it was a struggle. A few times we had a scuffle and um, both dogs got kind of put in their place. You know, us as the owners have to control the situation. We take the bone away, nobody gets the bone. It took a good six to eight months before they finally understood that they're both gonna get the same bone and it's okay and nobody needs to fight over anything. And now they're inseparable. Kiva and Keats are amazing in my house. I leave bones everywhere. I don't have to worry about nothing. I feed them raw. They can eat raw off a tablespoon together and there's no growling, no snarling. They're just licking the spoon, enjoying it. And it's, I mean, it's amazing. I'm so happy that they love each other that much. <laughs> um, she's crying because she wants to go back with him, but they, yeah, they would sleep together. They can eat side by side together. You know, we walk them together. They have a really great relationship. I, they're, they approached people together, the Wolfaroo Fest, everything was fine, they loved people. They're not very accepting of other dogs. It's rare that I come across a dog that they both like. Um, they do have same-sex aggression, um, and if the dogs are, I believe if they were uh, raised together, they have a better relationship as opposed to adding another one when she's three or four. Um, she loves a friend, she only loves one dog that I know of, and that's my friend's dog. The other two, um, the male, he'll get along with females, and you know, opposites attract, so that's how this breed really works. Uh, initially, when we got our first Thai Ridge back, he had boundaries. He was not allowed in the bedroom or the bathroom. He uh, was 
We were trying to keep them off the furniture, but anybody that owns this breed knows that they are couch uh, surfers. They like their comfort and they like to sleep on your couch. <laughs> um, and then we got the second dog, which is Kiva, and she went into her first heat at six months old. And we had to keep them separated. And we don't kennel them at night. We allow them to sleep on their dog beds. But once we got the second dog and she went in the heat, I had to separate them. We don't have a large home, so she came in the bedroom with us. And then of course, once you let one on the bed, you have to let the other on the bed. So after the heat cycle was over, we tried to get her out of our bedroom, but uh, she was so comfortable that we couldn't kick her out and we let the other one in and now they both sleep in our bed. But in the beginning, there was boundaries and there was rules. And um, I think it really helped structure the dog who he is today because he's very, like he's very well-rounded with people and children and it helped a lot. The Tire Ridgeback is a very loyal dog, very loyal to their family. Um, they don't do well with change. So once they're in a home, it's best to stay in that home for the rest of their life. Um, they need daily exercise. And of course, socialization from eight to 16 weeks is so important for this breed. If you don't, you will end up with a very fearful, shy, uh, intimidated dog. People that come visit us at our house, we tell them to come on in. Um, Keats, our oldest, he just greets them with a wagging tail. He's very excited. Um, he just wants to sniff. Uh, Kiva's a little more protective. She'll bark a little bit and then she'll realize, well, Keats is smelling this visitor. I'm going to go visit and everything's okay. And then our um, youngest is eight months old, the daughter, and she barks quite a bit. So they all have different personalities and I just tell the visitors, um, please just ignore them. It's your best to just ignore them and let them come to you almost like cats because they're very, the dog is very like cat-like. And when they come to them, I give cookies to the strangers and I allow the strangers to feed them their cookies. And then usually after that, everything's okay. They have very, very little hair, which is nice. Uh, we used to have a lab and the lab shed all year round. <laughs> These guys shed um, heavily, I'd say once a year for her and twice a year for our other dog. And then between shed, shedding season, we don't see much hair at all. We have a cat, a Persian Himalayan cat, and the cat has more hair all over our house than the three dogs. Um, and they're quiet. They don't bark much. Um, if they do, it's just a warning bark, intruder, intruder. Um, but other than that, they're, I mean, our neighbors didn't even know we had a second dog until you know, they've seen it because they're like, they never hear them barking. I usually do about an hour and a half walk a day for the dogs, um, sometimes more. Sometimes we head to Ganacho Trail in Windsor and I'll spend like half the day exploring the trails on extended leashes and that they're happy doing that. that. That's like their favorite thing. They find rabbits out there, you know, mice. They love to hunt. They have a very high prey drive, so. Or like I stop in the middle of our five kilometer walks and I like to take photos of my dogs. And when I do take a photo, I can't get them all to look at the, the camera. The other one's looking to the left and the other one's looking to the right. And it's almost like they're just on guard. They're constantly on guard, especially at night. They're looking for people or prey or anything running or walking by. And then um, sometimes we'll walk at night. I'll walk uh, at midnight to a baseball diamond and it's about a five kilometer walk there and back. And that's not on top of them running around and chasing each other before we head back. So they require a lot of exercise, I think, especially in the early years and training and trying to have a well-rounded dog is very important. So we originally started on a kibble and the Thai Ridgebacks, especially the blue, are known to have skin problems. Although we've never come across any major skin problems with her, we read that a raw diet is best for skin and health and it's more in tune to the primitive nature of the dog. In the wild they would catch their own prey and eat it, not catch their own bag of kibble and eat it. <laughs> so we decided to switch to raw. We gave the eight month old puppy a choice one day, kibble or raw. She chose the raw and that was the end. Now I can present kibble and she doesn't want it. Okay, if you want to own a tie ridge back as a pet, um, you need to have experience. Uh, they are not for first time dog owners. 
they need a lot of socialization in the beginning. You need to be prepared to dedicate uh, all your time to your dog in the first year of life is so important. I know they say the first eight to 16 weeks, but training never stops with this breed. They're always inquisitive. Um, so just be, be prepared and find a reputable breeder. The Thai Ridgeback is a very rare breed. Um, they're not recognized by the Canadian Kennel Club. They're not recognized by the American Kennel Club. They are recognized by the United, United uh, Kennel Club and FCI. And they say online that there's only about 300 in the United States. I do think there's a lot of undocumented ties in the States, more than 300, but um, only the ones that register are gonna show up. My life without the Thai Ridgeback would be not as healthy. We dedicate a lot of time to walking, training, socializing. We are getting out there and we go to these events and it's just fun all around and it's good socialization. But we're definitely now into a, the dog club instead of the social going to bars and drinking. And <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. It's healthier, healthier lifestyle for sure. Thank you.